Hello, Ryan here from RLF Vacuum Cleaners in Lake Haneef. Uh, today I have been set a challenge. Uh, this is an electric dishwasher from one of my neighbours that unfortunately had a tripping issue. They had multiple tripping issues and unfortunately, due to the modern world we live in, nobody was really that interested in fixing it. They called an electrician who said, no, we don't do that. Uh, they called Electra who wanted to charge them an arm and a leg to come have a look at it. They called an appliance repair company, but they wanted £200 to come and have a look at it and fix it. So in the end, they bought a new one, about 250 And I picked up the old one. I offered them a couple of quid for it, just so I could use it for a couple of little jobs if I can fix it. Now, with everything fault-finding, it's about breaking the circuit down. Now I've never worked on a dishwasher like this before. I worked on bigger dishwashers, and I'm guessing the principle is basically the same, but there's no telling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start our fault finding journey, uh, starting with the basics. So we will break it down and start at one end. So we will grab the plug. I've got my insulation testing multimeter, which does uh, up to a thousand volts, but we'll just do everything on 250 volts. So I'll grab a screwdriver, we'll open the plug up, and we'll go from there. Right, so I've grabbed my screwdriver, and we'll open the plug up. Now, these should probably have a moulded plug on. But obviously, I don't know what my neighbour's kitchen looked like. It's fairly fancy, so I'm guessing they probably cut the plug off. And they installed it, get it for a hole. And we can see, I don't know how well it's coming up on camera, but that does actually look very neat and tidy. No loose cores or anything like that. Everything's nice and tight, doesn't look overly crashed. So I'd say that is all right. So we'll put that back together. And with dishwashers and home appliances and things like this, they usually, everything is electronically controlled. And what we'll basically do is we'll do just a basic insulation test, 250 between neutral and earth, live and earth, and see what that gives us. And we'll go live on earth. Watch me, I've got one crocodile clip. So, Oop. get this in the camera shot and get that in shot. So, that is live on earth. Ooh. Zero. What neutral on earth? Neutral enough zero as well. Ooh. So that's an interesting one, isn't it? We've definitely got an issue. I'll just double check at the moment. Yes, we're definitely getting zero. Propping up 61 volts. That one's doing 250 volts. I'd say the issue is on the line. Oop. So, I actually found the fault already. Now, with these dishwashers, everything on these is accessible from the bottom. So we'll tip it over and we'll go from there. Back in one moment. You have to excuse the wobbly camera work. I'm going freestyle at the moment. So we've got it tipped over on its side. We took the plastic cover off the bottom to expose all the electronic components. Uh, what we'll do is we'll start off with the heat element here because heat elements are usually the main culprit for things like this. So we will stick the tester on and we will see what we find. So what I've done is I've managed to find another probe or another crocodile clip, it's not the correct probe, but it'll do what I want to do. So we've got one wire on the heat element and one wire on the nerve part. And we'll test that again. And we'll get an off scale high. So it's not the heat element. And the problem with these pieces of machinery are dishwashing things like this, consumer goods. Uh, they are all oh, everything's mains voltage, but then if we zoom out a bit. You can see that everything's all like plastic housing and stuff like that. 
So, realistically, probably going to be something that's connected to the bodywork somewhere. So what we got here? Ooh, don't focus. So we've got this filter here. I don't know how well that camera looks up, but that wire is actually sitting on the neutral. I suppose, no, not that was an earth fault, is it? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll test this and we'll go from there. So I've got you set up on the tripod now and we'll give you a quick overview. Stick that one on. Still got a fault. There it is. So having traced the wiring out, I found it's actually this wiring loom here that goes up into the door. So I wonder if there's a nick or damage on the control board. So we will open the door up see how we can get to the control panel on the front and we'll go from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo these screws around the edge and see what we can see. Got a little tub here for screws. I don't know how well you can see this. But you can see there's a load of wiring going to this little control board here. Some sensors go off to the rinsing. Got the door lock. Or a metal door. What we'll do is we'll grab the plug and we'll start jiggling the wire. So the fault has got to be on this wiring here or the door lock. Now we'll plug that back in so you know where it comes from. Now all low volts. Don't worry about there, is it? Not if we unplug the door lock. Yeah, getting short on the door lock as well. What's this purple wire doing? Yeah, short on that one as well. So, what we'll do is we'll grab a light and we'll check this wiring as it goes down into the door. Hello, it's Ryan here from RLF Vacuum Cleaners in Lake and Heath. Uh, through the process of elimination and disconnecting everything and testing, uh, I've taken the front panel off the door completely. Obviously, earlier I didn't quite open it enough. I don't know how well the camera is going to pick that up. But you can see there's like burning and corrosion on that little connector and circuit board there. And what happens is with that circuit board connected, you get, get this way, 
get nothing. Now if I quickly disconnect it, wiggle it out gently, try not to let you keep yourself, the IR readings start going up. So I believe this is the fault. Now this looks to be on like the rinse aid container. It's all sticky and horrible. So it's obviously sprung a leak. Short of that connector out. And looks to me, yes, that container looks like it, yes. It's actually connected to earth. So you've actually got a connection, even though it's not resistive. I reckon it's just chemical. I don't know how the camera's going to pick that up, but there is actually a connection between live and earth. So what I'm going to do is, and you can see it sort of stabling at around 100 mega ohms. Disconnect this, run it, see what happens, and then worst comes to worst, order a new one of these. I'm guessing it's just a standard component. I don't actually know who makes these Electra dishwashers because Electra is just a brand that AO sell. So yeah, this is what you find with fault finding. It can take 10 minutes or an hour. It's literally going through everything, disconnecting, breaking the circuit down. Once I'd eliminated everything on the bottom, I was pretty sure it's probably a nipped wire. But then you look for all this and you start looking for all oh, and none of the wires are nipped. You start disconnecting the circuit boards until eventually you find your smoking gun. So yeah, this is fault finding on the dishwasher. Unfortunately with these dishwashers and home appliance components, everything is 240. This little connector is connected to mains electricity. And you can see, even by wiggling it, it's changing the insulation resistance reading. chop that off, wire up a new connector and go from there. So yeah, I'll be back when it's all back together and I can run it. So quickly before we power it on, we'll just do a quick IR test, similar to what will be used on a pack test. So we'll just go 250 between live and earth and neutral and earth just to make sure that we haven't damaged anything putting it back together so our neutral earth off scale high and we're off scale high on that one so what we'll do is I'll plug it into my RCD extension lead just to give us a bit of double protection in case the worst should happen. It shouldn't. You never tell with electricity. So. Just got our simple plug-in RCD. Plug it in like so. And I'll bring you around the front. lights on so go a bit of light so we'll put it I don't know I don't really know what any of these buttons do um, but it's doing something hasn't tripped off yet Yes, if we do that again. I'll draw on about, is that coming out about half a watt? So if we turn that on. Six watts. Sounds like we're filling, we're drawing 72 watts. Don't know how well the camera's picking this up. I'll try and hold the light steady. So we've got 14 minutes left, 72 watts. Get up to power, 85 watts. Eight five watts, got twelve minutes left.
FF. What does FF stand for? Well, this didn't trip off, so we'll I'll get the instruction manual up and all.